And go. My faith cries out and makes each petty archer in this body as hardy as the anemian on man's nerve. Still I am called. Still am I called. Unhand me, gentlemen. By heaven, I'll make a ghost of him that that's me. I say, away! Go on. I'll follow thee. He waxes desperate with imagination. Let's follow. Tis not fit thus to obey him. Have, have after. To what issue will this come? Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Uh, heaven will direct it. Nay, let's follow him. Rotten Denmark. <laughs> there it is right there. Uh, scene one. Uh, no, it's act one, scene five. I'm on the part of the platform. Enter Ghost. Who's Ghost? Ghost in Hamlet. I'll do Ghost. Uh, I'll go Ghost. Whither wilt thou lead me? Speak, speak, I'll go no further. Lord, I'm free. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Did you go to start? He's just over the doing this. Like anyone can do it. I thought you were saying anybody, any takers. Any takers. Mark me! I will. Pops, my hour. It's all those. It's from <laughs> when I do soulless and tormented flames must render a louder myself. stage voice, please. <laughs> render up myself. Alas, poor ghost. Pity me not. Lend thy serious hearing to what I shall unfold. Speak! I am bound to hear. Yes. <laughs> so art thou bound yeah. to revenge when thou shalt hear. What? I am thy father's spirit, doomed for the certain to turn to walk the night. And for the day confined to fast in fires till the foul crimes that got done my days of nature be burnt and for purged away. But that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house. I would not, I would a tale unfold whose lighted word would <clears throat> would hover up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, and make thy two eyes like dark, uh, start from their spheres, thy knotted and combined locks to pass, to part, and each particular hair to stand on end. Like foils from the central open time, and this eternal blazon must not be the earth of flesh and blood. This, this, oh, if thou didst ever love thy dear father, oh God, avenge his foul. And most unnatural murder. Murder! Murder! Most foul as it is to the best it is, and this most foul, strange and unnatural. What well, hates me to know it, that I, with wings as swift as meditation, or the thoughts of love, may sweep to my revenge. I find the act. The dollar <laughs> shouldst thou be. Than the fat word that roots itself in ease of unleash war, <laughs> which thou not stir in this. Now, Hamlet, here art is given out that sleeping in my orchard a serpent stung me 
So the whole of our Denmark is by a forged process of my death. Frankly abused. But no, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life, now wears his crown. <sighs> Finally, <laughs> oh, my pathetic soul. <laughs> my uncle? Same choice. I, that incestuous, that adulterous beast with witchcraft of his wit with traitorous gift of wicked wit and gifts, gifts that have the power so to rebuke, seduce one of his enameled lust, the will of my most immortal seeming virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet, the water falling off was there. Oh, from me, without love, was thy dignity. Can you hear you? With the vow I made to her in marriage. Shout up! And to decline upon rich, rich un. Nature, which, whose natural gifts were core to those of mine. But virtue, as it would never be moved, <laughs> the luminous court and the shape of heaven, so lust, and uh, though with a rage, angel linked. Will sate himself on a celestial bed and prey on garbage. But soft, it makes I sit the morning air. What? Brief, let me be <clears throat> sleeping within my orchard, my custom always in the afternoon, upon my secure hour. Thy uncle stole with juice of cursing. Be, be, bold on the other pile. I can't hear you. And I think that was her head. I can't hear you. You can turn it up. <laughs> turn up your voice. The natural gates <laughs> and alleys of the body, and with a sudden vigor it stuff possess and curd. Like the eagle dropping into milk, the thin and wholesomeness blood, so did it mine, and a most instant tether bark about, and laser like with vile and loathsome crust, all my smooth body. Thus was I sleeping. By a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen, of all once dispatched, cut off, even in the blossoms of my sin, unhoused and disappointed, unmanned, oh no, reckling made, but sent to thy account with all my imperfections in my head. Oh, horrible! Oh, oh, horrible! Oh, horrible! Most horrible! If thou hast any nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal blood of Denmark be a couch for a luxury and damned incest. But how never thou pure. Pursuest this act, taint not thy mind, nor let the soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven and to those torrents that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her, and it bear thee well at once. 
glow worm shows the mutton to be near. Tends to pale its unspectral fire. I do. I do. I do remember me. Oh, you hopes of heaven. Oh, earth. What else? And shall I couple hell? Oh, fie. Oh, hold my heart of you sinners. You're not instant old, but bear me stiffly up. Oh, what did I say? Um, remember thee? And thou, <laughs> poor ghost, while memory holds a true seat in this distracted globe, remember thee? Yea. From the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial fond records. All saws of books, all forms, all pressure past that youth and observation copied there. And, thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, Ooh. unfixed with baser matter. Yes, by heaven, O oh, most pernicious woman! O oh, villain, villain, smiling, damned villain! My tables. Meet it as I set it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least, I'm sure it may be so in Denmark. So, uncle, there you are. Now to my word. It is adieu, adieu. Remember me. I have sworn it. My lord, my lord. My lord. lord Hamlet. Heaven secure him. So be it. Hello, ho, ho, my lord. Uh, hello, hello, ho, ho, boy. Uh, come, bird, come. How is it, my noble lord? What's news, my lord? Oh, wonderful. Good, my lord, tell it. Ah, uh, well, no, you will reveal it. Not I, my lord, by heaven. Nor I, my lord. Ah, I'll say you then, with heart of man, once think it, but you'll be secret. I, I, by I heaven, my lord. There's ne'er a villain dwelling in all of Denmark, but he's an arrant knave. There needs no ghost, my lord. Come from the grave to tell us this. Why, right. You are in the right. And so, without more circumstance at all, I hold it fit that we shake hands and part. You, as your business and desire shall point you, for every man shall hath business and desire, such as it is, and for my own poor part, look you, I'll go pray. These are but wild and whirling words, my lord. Well, I'm sorry they offend you heartily, yes, faith, heartily. There's no offense, my lord. Yes, I said Patrick, the, is, but there is Horatio, and much offense too, touching this vision here. It is an honest ghost that let me tell you, for your desire to know what is between us, or masters as you say, and now, good friends, as you are friends, scholars, and soldiers, give me one poor request. What is it, my lord? We will. Never make known what you have seen tonight. My lord, we, we, we will not. not. Nay, but swear it. In faith. Not my mother, nor no, 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 no. no, I, my lord, e faith. Upon my sword. We have sworn, my lord, already. Indeed, upon my sword, indeed. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> ha, boy, sayest thou so? Uh, art thou there a true penny? Come on, come on, you hear this fellow in his cellarage. Consent to swear. Propose the oath, my lord. The ghost ain't not yet. Uh, <laughs> never to speak of this that you have seen. Swear by my sword. Huge ghost. Hick. Hick. Ubi gay. Then we'll shift our ground. Come hither, gentlemen, and lay your hands once again upon my sword. Never to speak Ooh. of this that you have heard. Swear by my sword. Huge ghost. Swear by Well said, old Moe. <laughs> Canst thou work in earth, earth so fast? A worthy pioneer, once more, remove, good friends. Oh, day and night, but this is wondrous strange. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are things in heaven 
more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than dreams that are dreamt in your philosophy. But come. Here, as before, never so help you mercy, how strange or odd summer I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think meet to put on an attic disposition on that you as such time seeing me ne shall never shall with arms encumbered thus or this hand head shake or by pronouncing some doubtful phrase says well well we know or well we could and if we would uh, or if we list to speak or uh, there be and if there might or some ambiguous given up to note that you know not aught of me, this not to do. So grace and mercy, as you most need, help you. Swear. Swear. Rest, rest, perturbed spirit. So, gentlemen, with all my love, I do commend me to you. And uh, what so poor a man as Hamlet is may to may do to express his love and friending to you. God willing shall not lack. L let us go in together. And still your fingers on your lips, I pray, the time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite, that ever I was born to set it right. Ah, nay, come, let's go together. Act 2, scene 2, or scene 1, we skip. It is the Polonius Reynaldo speech showing that Polonius is such a spy on everybody he sees, and he knows oh, that the kid is yeah. going back to uh, France. France. He's spying on France. Act one, scene one, scene two. Where is it? 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 Where is no, no, you just to put it Polonius. Oh, okay. I'm talking, okay. Oh, my lord, my lord, I have been so affrighted. Where are we? Oh. We're, get, we're in the middle we're of the scene. Yeah. Where it says enter Ophelia. Exit Reynaldo. Exit Reynaldo. Oh, okay. And we're just going to skip to when Ophelia comes in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you want to say how now, no. Ophelia? What's the matter? Or should I just. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And then just. Oh, going to oh, Ophelia oh, comes oh, in. I see. I see. Oh no, Cecilia, where's Exit Ronaldo? Oh, enter enter Ophelia. Ophelia. Yeah. Oh, and got it. Okay. Take up Polonius. Okay. It's kind of pushed in. <clears throat> I, I am so sorry. I lost me away. No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> you're there. All right. I'll do that. Exit. Carry, carry on. Carry okay. on. So, um, how now? Is that it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh no, Ophelia, what's the matter? Oh, my lord, my lord, I have been so affrighted. With what? In the name of God. My lord, as I was sewing in my closet, Lord Hamlet, with his doublet all unbraced, no hat upon his head, his stockings fouled, ungartered and down gyved to his ankle, pale as his shirt, his knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous in purport, as if he had been loosed out of hell to speak of horrors, he comes before me. Oh, mad for thy love? My lord, I do not know, but truly, I do fear it. What said he? He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to the length of all his arm, and with his other hand thus o'er his brow, he falls to such perusal of my face as a would draw it. Long stayed he so. At last, a little shaking of mine arm, and thrice his head thus waving up and down, he raised a sigh so piteous and profound, as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. That done, he let me go, and with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes, for out of doors he went without their helps. And to the end, to the last, bended their light on me. Oh, come, come, go with me. I will go seek the king. This is the very ecstasy of love, whose violent property fordoons itself and leads the will, will to desperate undertakings as oft as any passion under heaven that does affect, afflict our natures. Uh, I am sorry. Uh, what, have you given him any hard words of hay of late? 
No, my good lord, but as you did command, I did repel his letters and deny his access to me. That hath made him mad. I am sorry that with better heed and judgment I had not quoted him. I feared he did but uh, trifle, and meant to rack thee, but be sure of my jealousy. By heaven, it is the proper it up to our age to cast beyond ourselves in our opinions, as it is common for the younger sort to lack discretion. Come, go we to the king. This must be known, which must, being kept close, might move more grief to hide than hate to utter love. Come, come. Act two, scene two. Welcome, dear Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Oh, <laughs> uh, moreover, that we much did long to see you, the need we have to use you did provoke our hasty to sending. Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation, so call it. And since it had the exterior nor the inward uh, man resembles that it was. And when what it should be more than his father's death, that that that's hath put him so much from the understanding of himself, I cannot dream of. I can treat you both uh, that being uh, so young days brought up with him and sister neighbored uh, to his youth and behavior that you shall stage your rest here in our court and say some little time and so by your companies to draw him into your pleasures and to gather so much as from occasion that you may glean whether or not to the us this unknown afflicts him thus, that open that lies within must remedy. Good gentlemen, he hath talked much of you, and sure I am two men there is not living to whom he more adheres. If it will please you to show us so much gentry and goodwill as to expend your time with us a while for the supply and profit of our hope, your visitation shall receive such thanks as fits a king's remembrance. Both your majesties might, by the sovereign power you have of us, put your dread pleasures more into command than to entreaty. But we both obey, and here give up ourselves in full bent to lay our service freely at your feet to be commanded. <laughs> thanks, Rosencrantz, and uh, gentle uh, Gildenstern. Thanks, Guildenstern and gentle Rosencrantz. <laughs> <laughs> and I beseech you instantly to visit my too much changed son. Go, some of you, and bring these gentlemen here, oh, where Hamlet is. Heavens make our presence and our practices pleasant and helpful to him. Aye, amen. I love it because when they, in that scene, I think it was their play, when they did that scene, it was like she he got the oh, he got the that. names wrong. Oh, okay. and so she says that thanks, Gildan, sir. And Rosencrantz. Oh, that's so. Oh. Ellen funny. was the first one to teach me that. Yeah. Ellen was the first one to teach me that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Enter Polonius. Well, <laughs> I think I got it when Rosencrantz and Gildenstern are dead. Yeah, the yeah. play we did. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Enter Polonius. Okay. So we doing? Oh yes, okay. The ambassadors of Norway, my good lord, are joyfully returned. Thou still hast been the father of good news. <laughs> Am I, my lord? I show you, my good liege, I hold my duty as I hold my soul, both to my God and to my gracious king. And I do think, or else this brain of mine has not the trail of policy so, so sure as it hath used to do, that I have found the very cause of Hamlet's lunacy. Oh, speak of that. Ah. Yes, let do that do I long to hear. Well, give first admittance to the ambassadors. Mm -hmm. My news shall be the fruit to that great feast. Yes, well, okay. Uh, thyself do grace to them and bring them in. 
He tells me, my Gertrude, that he has found the head and source of all your son's distemper. I doubt it is no other but the main, his father's death and our over-hasty marriage. Well, we shall sift him. <coughs> now, uh, Voltamand, we'll just skip all your little words there, and we'll go Can down to it <laughs> likes us well, and to our more considered time, we'll read, answer, and think upon this business. Meantime, we thank you for your well-took labor, and so go to your rest uh, at night, and we'll feast together. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> most welcome home. <laughs> and let's see, welcome I'm home. Polyonius. Polyonius. Wait, I've got lost again. This business is well ended. Good. My liege and madam, to expostulate what majesty should be, what duty is, what day is day, what night is night, and time is time, were nothing but to waste night, day, and time. Therefore, since brevity is the soul of wit, and tediously the limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. Your noble son is mad. <gasps> mad, I call I had for to, to find true madness, what is it but to be nothing else but mad? Mad, let that go. More matter with less art. Oh, madam, I swear I use no art at all. Uh, that he is mad, tis true. Tis true, tis pity. And pity, tis, tis true. A foolish figure, but farewell, wit, for I will use no art. Mad, let us grant him then. And now it remains that we find out the cause of this effect, or rather, rather say the cause of this defect for this effect defective comes by cause thus it remains and the remainder thus for pen i have a daughter have while she is mine who in her duty and obedience mark have given me this now gather and surmise to the celestial my, and my soul's idol the most beautified Ophelia. Oh, that's an old phrase, wild phrase. Beautified is a vile phrase. But you shall hear thus. In her excellent white bosom, these, etc. Came this from Hamlet to her? Uh, good madam, stay a while. I will be faithful. Doubt thou the stars are fire. Doubt that the sun doth move. Doubt truth be a, to be a liar, but never doubt I love. Oh, dear Ophelia, I am ill at these numbers. I have not art to reckon my groans, but that I love thee best, O oh, most best. Believe it. Adieu. Thine evermore, my dear lady, whilst this machine is to him. Thus, this in obedience hath my daughter showed me, and more above hath his soliciting, as they fell out by time by means and place, all given to my ear. The uh, movie version has Kate Winslet saying that little poem there and is saying it with such that she's being pushed to say it. Mm -hmm. You see, um, she, she didn't want to say that. That's her own personal message. Mm -hmm. But Polonius said, no, you're going to say it. Yeah. Anyway. How about that? But how hath he received his love? Well, what do you think of me? Well, uh, as a man faithful and honorable. Well, I would fain prove so. But what might you think when I have seen this hot love on the wing? As I perceived it, I must tell you that before my daughter told me, uh, what might you, oh, my dear Majesty, your Queen here, think? If I had played the desk, or table book, or given my heart a winking, mute and dumb, or looked upon this love with idle light sight, sight, what might you think? No, I went round to work, and my young mistress thus did I bespeak. Lord Hamlet is a prince out of thy star. This must not be. 
and then I prescribed prescript to her gave I prescripts gave her that she should lock herself from his resort, admit admit no messages, receive no tokens. Which done, she took the fruits of my advice, and he repulsed a short tale to me, fell into a sadness, then into a fast, thence to a watch, thence to into a weakness, thence to a lightness. And by this declension into the madness wherein he now he raves, and all we mourn for. Do you think this? It may be very like. Hath there been such a time? I'll fain know that, that I have positively said, "Tis so." When it proved otherwise, not that I know. Well, take this from this. If it be otherwise. If circumstances lead me, I will find where truth is hid, though it were hid indeed within this center. How oh, may we try it further? Well, you know, sometimes you walk four hours together here in the lobby. So he does indeed. At such a time, I'll loose my daughter to him. Be you and I behind and harass then. Mark the encounter. If, if he love her not, and be not from his reason fallen thereon, let me be no assistance for a state, but keep a farm and carters. We will try it. But look where sadly the poor wretch comes reading. Away, I do beseech you both, away. I'll, I'll board him presently. Oh, this will be fun. <laughs> Anybody want to oh. read Hamlet for this little scene? Yeah, second Hamlet. I, I have second Hamlet. There you go. If that's okay. Sure. There you go. If anyone else wants to do this no, no, part, no, though, please, I don't please, mind. Please, 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 please. You're brave. <laughs> how does <laughs> my good okay. lord Hamlet get here? How, how does my good lord Hamlet? Well, God of mercy. Well, do you know me, my lord? Excellent well. You are a fishmonger. Huh. Not I, my lord. Then I would. You were so honest a man. Honest, my lord? Aye, sir. To be honest, as this world goes, is to be one man picked out of ten thousand. Well, that's very true, my lord. For if the sun breed maggots and a dead dog, being a good kissing Karen, have you a daughter? Oh, I have, my lord. Let her not walk in the sun. Conception is a blessing. But as your daughter may conceive, friend, look to it. Oh. How saying by that? Still hopping on my dog, yet he knew me not at first, and said I was a fishmonger. So far, far gone. And truly, in my youth I have suffered so much extremity for love, very near this. I'll speak to him again. What read you, my lord? Words, words, and words. What is the matter, my lord? Between who? I mean, the matter that you read, my lord. Slander, sir. For the satirical rogue says here that old men have gray beards, that their faces are wrinkled, their eyes purging thick amber and plum tree gum, and that they have a plentiful lack of wit, together with most weak hands. All which, sir, though I most powerfully and potently believe, yet I hold it not honestly to have it thus set down. For yourself, sir, shall grow old as I am, if like a crab you could go backward. <laughs> Through this be madness, yet there is method in it. Uh, will you walk out of the air, my lord? Into my grave? Indeed, that's out of the air. Um, and how pregnant sometimes his replies are. A happiness that often madness hits in, which reason and sanity could not prosperous. prosperously be delivered of. I will leave him and suddenly contrive the means of meeting between him and my daughter. My honorable lord, I will most humbly take my leave of you. You cannot, sir, take from me anything that I will more willingly part with all, except my life, except my life, except my life. Well, uh, fare you well, my lord, fare you well. These tedious old fools. You go and seek the Lord Hamlet. There he is. God save you, sir. My honored Lord. My most dear Lord. My excellent good friends. How dost thou, Guildenstern? Ah, Rosencrantz. Good lads. How do you both? Can we switch back with 
read your reading handbook there? Yes, you can. Okay. You're doing a good job, though. Don't worry. My excellent good friends, how dost thou, Gildan Stark? Oh, Rosencrantz, good lads, how do you both? As a different children of the earth. Happy in that we are not over happy. On Fortune's Cat, we are not at the very bottom. Nor the soles of her shoe? Neither, my lord. <laughs> then you live with a, about her waist, or in the middle of her favors. Faith, her privates we. In the speak secret parts of Fortune? Oh, most true. She is a strumpet. What news? And then, my lord, but that the world's grown honest. There is doomsday near, but your news is not true. Let me question more in particular. Um, what have you, my good friends, deserved at the hands of fortune that she sends you to prison? Hither. Prison, my lord? Oh, Denmark's prison. There yeah. is the world one. A goodly one, in which there are many confines, wards, and uh, dungeons. Denmark being one of the worst. We think not so, my lord. Then why tis none to you when there is nothing uh, neither either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. To me, it is a prison. Why then, your ambition makes it one, tis too narrow for your mind. Oh, God. I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself king of infinite space were it not that I have had bad dreams. Dreams? Which dreams are indeed are ambition? For the very substance of the ambition is merely the shadow of a dream. A dream itself is but a shadow. Truly, and I hold ambition of so airy and light a quality that it is but a shadow's shadow. Then are our beggars bodies, and our monarchs, and our outstretched heroes the beggars shadows. Shall we to the court, for by my fair I cannot reason? We'll, we'll wait, wait upon, upon you. Uh, no such matter. I will not sort you with the rest of my servants, for to speak to you like an honest man, I am most dreadfully attended. But in the beaten ways of friendship, what make you an Elsinore? To visit you, my lord, no other occasion. Oh, beggar that I am, I even poorer in thanks, but I thank you, and sure, dear friends, my thanks are too dear a halfpenny. Were you not sent for? Is it? Your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? Come, dear Justice, come, come, nay, nay, speak. Uh, what should we say, my lord? Why, anything but to the purpose. You were sent for, and there is a kind of confession to your looks, which you modesties have not crafted, have not crafted enough to come up. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. To what end, my lord? That you must teach me. But let me conjure you by the night rites of our friendship, fellowship, by the consummation of our youth, by the obligation of our ever preserved love, and by what more dear a better proposer can charge you with all, be even and direct with me, whether you were sent for me or no. What say you? Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. what say you? What say you? Uh, nay, then I have an eye of you. If you love me, hold not off. Uh, my lord, we were sent for. I will tell you why. So shall my anticipation prevent your discovery, and why your secrecy to the king and queen hold no further feather. I have late, but wherefore I know not, lost all my mirth, forgone all a custom of exercises, and indeed it goes so heavily with my disposition that this goodly frame, the earth, seems to me a sterile promontory. This most excellent canopy of it, the air. Look you, this brave o'erhanging firmament, this majestical roof, fretted with golden fire. <laughs> Why it appears no other thing to me but a foul and pestilent congregation of vapors. What a piece of work is a man! How noble in reason, how infinite in faculties, in form, and moving, and how express and admirable, in action, how like an angel, in apprehension, how like a god! 
the beauty of the world, the paragon of animals. And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Man delights not me. No, nor woman neither, though by your smiling you seem to say so. My lord, there is no such stuff in my thoughts. Why did you laugh then, when I said man delights not me? To think, my lord, if you delight not in man, what Lenten entertainment the players shall receive from you. We coded them on the way, and hither are they coming to offer you service. Well, he that plays the king shall be welcome. His majesty shall have tribute of me. The adventurous knight shall use his foil and target. The lover shall not sigh gratis. The humorous man shall end his part in peace. The clown shall make those laugh whose lungs are tickled with oarsair. And the lady shall, say, lady shall say her mind freely, or the blank verse shall halt for it. What players are they? Even those they were wont to take delight in, the tragi tragedians of the city. How chances they travel, their residence, both in reputation and profit, and was better both ways. I think their inhibition comes from the means of the late innovation. Do they hold the same estimation they did when I was in the city? Are they so followed? No, indeed, are they not. How comes it? Do they grow rusty? Nay, their endeavor keeps in the wanted, wanted place, pace, and there is, sir, an airy of children, little eyes, that cry out on the top of question, and are most tyrannically clapped for it. These are now the fashion, and so they rattle the common stages, so they call them, that many wearing rapiers are afraid of goose quills and dare scarce come thither. What? Are they children? What maintains them? How are they How are they escorted? Will they pursue the quality they well, last comes down to beard me in Denmark? Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> it's coming up. Go ahead. Okay. Pursues the quality no longer that they could sing? Will they not say afterwards, uh, if they should grow themselves to common players, as it is most like, if their means are no better, their writers do them wrong to make them exclaim against their, their own succession? Faith, there has been much to do on both sides, and the nation holds it no sin to tar them to controversy. There was for a while no money bid for argument, unless the poet and the player went to cuffs in the question. Is possible? Oh, there has been much throwing about of brains. Well, do, do the boys carry it away? Aye, that they do, my lord. Hercules and his load, too. This is not very strange. For my uncle is a king of Denmark, and those that would make mouths at him while my father lived, so give 20, 40, 50, a hundred ducats apiece for his pictures and, and little. It's blood. There's something more in this than natural. A philosophy should point it out. There are the players. Gentlemen, you're welcome to Elsinore. Your hands come then. The appurtenance of welcome is fashion and ceremony. Let me comply with you in this garb lest my assent to the players, which I tell you must show fairly outwards, should more appear like entertainment than yours. You are welcome, but my uncle father and aunt mother are deceived. Now well, let's find out what, what, my dear lord. We're going to go into this. I am the man of the <laughs> 